situation, a bad situation, but I'm coming to tell you right now, in spite of what you went through, God woke you up this morning. And God woke you up this morning, and you got up out of bed this morning, and you got in your car, or got on your bike, and you got here this morning. So that lets me know already, you've already overcome that thing that God took you out. Turn your Bibles while you're standing. Turn your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse number 32. Turn your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse number 32. And while you're looking for the text, I need you to begin in your own spirit realm. Pray for your man of God. Because I am so overwhelmed with joy right now yes. because I am in high anticipation of what the Lord is about to do in this place. Yes, Lord. Someone who's been stuck for a long time is about to be set free. Yes, Lord. Come on, come we on. Give come God on. Praise. Yes. Thank God for my new friend, Bishop Elad, Bishop Larry Leonard Jr. and his family for being a part of this worship yes, experience. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give God praise for the Leonard family. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse number 32. Mm -hmm. Let me read a segment of it. It says, Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Take your seats. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. I thank God I understand the times we live in. Mm -hmm. I understand what we must do. Right. And I'm not concerned that others are entertaining folks and satisfied with just doing church. Huh. I've made my mind up we're going to be the church. We're going to be right. committed to navigating people through times of doubt and disbelief. We're going to be a beacon of light in this dark community and in this dark city. We will not just meet together to have church. We are boldly declaring we will be the church. Yes. We will be the place of healing. We will be the place of deliverance. We won't shy away from the hard things because we serve a God that we declare there's nothing too big for God. So I'm coming to tell you this morning, we're going to talk about a subject others won't talk about. Mm -hmm. But there's somebody that needs to be set free in here. Right, yes, Repeat Lord. after me, mental illness and violence is no joking matter. No we're going to deal with this subject text and someone will be set free. Amen. Because the Bible says, for a lack of knowledge, 
Bible says he was living in the tomb. He was alive in a dead place. Uh, how many of you today, you are alive because God woke you up, but you're living in a dead place. You have no joy. You have no passion. You have no real desires. You're just existing. So you are alive, but you're living in a dead place. Your life should be full of passion. Your life should be enjoyable. You should be living life to the full. But many of us are waking up alive in a dead place. Living in a dead place. But this man who was living in a dead place, he suffered what I can identify at least three mental illnesses. The first thing I discovered this man suffered with or struggled with was schizophrenia. That's a distorted reality when you hear things and see things that really don't exist. Those who are in this rap drug culture know what I'm saying. I always feel like somebody's watching me. That's a form of schizophrenia because who ain't nobody got time to always be watching you. Folks have their own. This is the church folks. The church folks. It took me out. Yeah. 
have. No matter how many degrees I have on the wall, no matter how many square foot my house is, if I don't have the name of Jesus, I don't have what I need to get through and get a break through. But I thank God I know the word of God still works. The name of Jesus still works. I dare you to call the name of Jesus over your children, over your finances, over your deliverance, over your healing. I dare you to stop complaining and stop calling on Jesus. I dare you to call on the name of Jesus. I dare you to start making decrees over your situation. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Let me bless you one more time before I set you free. Because a question posed in my spirit that after the man was delivered, why, 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 why would they be afraid? They even told Jesus, you need to leave town. You would think after Jesus healed a man that was mentally ill that everybody would be celebrating. You would think that everybody would be happy. But their response was twofold. They said they are now afraid and Jesus get out of here. But let me bless you real good right here. Why would they get mad and upset? Because what I failed to tell you is that the evil spirit left the man and went in the pigs and went in the swine and the swine ran over the crib. You said preacher what does that mean you had to get blessed real quick what the pigs represented and they had the pigs was private industry the pigs were big business and if you want to make some folks mad start messing with their money what are you saying preacher the pigs represented a new economy and what you don't realize is the people who are hooked on drugs and the people who are mentally ill, they're the easiest ones to lock up. What you saying, preacher? While you asleep, they built what's called private prisons. And what private prisons do is they lock up your little boys and your little girls after they put drugs in our hood. Then they lock up those little boys. And the easiest person to lock up is somebody that's mentally ill because they can't fight back. I used to be 
was our enemy. The, the white man and the white hood was our enemy. We spent so much focus creating this enemy that we've lost reality of who our real enemy has become. Okay. This man in this white hood has not done nearly as much damage on us as we have done on ourselves. Yeah, right. More Black men and brown men have killed one another than the white man in the white hood would have ever imagined doing. So it's led us to this. Listen to me, sons. This boy kills this boy over nonsense. So now you see this mother crying from both sides of her face. What this boy did when he took this boy's life is he caused two mothers to have a crisis. One mother is crying because her boy is dead. Another mother is crying because her boy will be incarcerated for the rest of his life. We must come to the reality the battle is not us against them, the battle is us against us. And we must break that curse. And I am declaring in this ministry, you, you hear me, brothers? I am declaring the war is not against the man in the white hood. The war is against unclean spirits that are telling our little boys their life has no value and their life has no significance. You will not be a generation under the influence of drugs, gang, and violence. You will be young men that will know the Lord, that will feel the Lord. Your mamas won't cry because they got to come visit you in the penitentiary. Your mamas won't cry because they got to bury you early. You will raise up and you will become the men that God has created you and called you to be. I will not let one of you fail on my watch. I am declaring there is a war, but it's not against a white man in a white hood. It's a war against satanic warfare, and you will win this battle. I need everybody here to touch and agree with me. 